I just, uh, I'll say something short. I'm not going to say too much here because we're going to continue this discussion. Uh, what uh, the disagreement between us and some of the views held, for example, by Solomon, which I respect, but one wants to be careful, I think, and give something rather more subtle and complex uh, in answer than I might first tend to do. And I, I think, well, one of the things that I want to start with, the brain does not process abstract objects. So there has to be something that is not abstract to give an account of any mathematical thinking. So one of the things I want to distinguish is between the claims about the nature of number and the claims about mathematical thinking. And to, but I think we could probably agree on that. And the only remark I'll make here, I want to continue in the discussions of Jim's area, to say the primacy goes to the thinking and secondarily to the nature, whereas much mathematical discussion goes the other way. What's primary is the nature of the, of the abstract objects, not the thinking about them. That, I think, is a mistake. Uh, one, only one comment. I think we should distinguish the problem, the question of, of the, uh, the, so to speak, the origin of mathematical concept, mathematical objects, whether the human creation so or not, uh, from a question of the objectivity, or from their objectivity. There are lots of uh, objects that are human constructions. And yet we have lots of very hard uh, facts, uh, objective facts about them. Bridges are human constructions. Uh, they are cultural objects in a sense. But, <laughs> but we'd better be aware that there are, there are very hard facts about them, objective facts. Uh, as, uh, as Turing said to Wittgenstein, if you, if you have wrong ideas about mathematics uh, when you build them, uh, the bridge will collapse. Uh, so, uh, so I think we have to distinguish these two questions from, from each other very, very, very clearly. Yeah. Uh, of course, we have to distinguish these things clearly. But my argument here is that certain abstract objects, like syntactic categories, like numbers, has a certain cultural invariance. I mean, if we did not insist on that, the field will be open for Husserl and his kind of mathematical philosophy. But this is a long point. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I argue a little bit about the point you are making in, in the paper, but could not really enter into it here. Okay. I find your notion of collective mind extremely, com extremely problematic. I, it actually contradicts the methodological individualism. Well, According uh, to uh, which there is no such a thing as a <laughs> universal mind as Albert Royce, for instance, would have us. You, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this is, uh, uh, I use this as a cultural object. <coughs> I use the, the collective mind as a colloquial phrase. It was used by the anthropologists, so I thought it was amusing to adopt this phrase. But behind this idea of a collective mind, there is this. This, this, this world of abstract objects, <coughs> different from matter and different from individual mind. So, uh, uh, it's more a choice of words. Last question. Last question. I think there's something uh, I, have, I observed that I think is relevant to what kind of point of view Pat was given. Tell me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong Pat. Um, I noticed that, I showed that uh, if you take very basic principles about finite sets, there's a unique process of extrapolation to general sets uh, based on simplicity. You take all simple statements of a certain form and uh, uh, in the finite, and you can extrapolate them to the infinite. You take all statements, you get, you get nonsense. But, but you take the simple ones, uh, and you can prove a theorem that that, that, that generates the yeah, directly from finite considerations. You see the connection I'm, I'm thinking of with what you said? Well, yeah, but, but the point yeah. here is that we, I was telling the story about the origin and tried to answer the criticism from Husserl. Pure mathematics, in a sense, arose out of this practice when this, the old syntax became the new structure. 
and the new structures then you, you start to investigate that new structure and discover all kinds of, 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 of interesting and deep properties. But that is the tool maker's trade, not the natural scientist's trade. I think my comment was more related to what Pat was saying. Okay, that's good. I'll, 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 I'll wait. I better, I'll wait, Harvey. Okay. Uh, time is up. Obviously, yes, our time is up. We don't want to run into the next session. Um, so thank you. That was very stimulating.